Triple KO. Welcome back to Triple KO. This is not Mortal Monday. It is Mortal Tuesday, but we are talking all about Mortal Kombat 1 today. A little bit of Street Fighter 6 stuff to, as well. Got Maximilian here, who is a Final Fantasy 7 expert. We have, Come we on have off this boat. Just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have Justin Wong, who is a fighting game everything expert. And uh, we have me, who has not finished or played much of Mortal Kombat 1 at all, or Aki. So I'm kind of going to be like uh, picking your guys' brains. Yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 um, yeah. We'll tell you everything you need to know about MK1 and Aki, because I, I, I'm going to throw this out there right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Aki is like one of my favorite characters to play in Street Fighter 6. What about you, Justin? One, I mean, she's my main now. Okay, all right, so she, we'll talk about she, that's it later. Official. That's, that's, that's yeah, official. That's official. Yeah, that's official. Yeah, she's okay. my main character now, for she's sure. She's super fun. Like, to me, it's like Ken, Marissa, Aki, easy, of, like, characters that I really enjoy playing. So I'll tell you guys, my one option to play Mortal Kombat 11, because I, I was in Italy for two weeks, was to play the Switch version. If I Yo, really wanted. Why, why not? I heard, I heard it had great reviews. Yes, because I heard it was awesome. Just at least for the memes, I can never find Wi-Fi strong enough to download like that gigs, yeah. that amount of gigs, because we yeah. were moving around from like Airbnb to hotel to blah blah blah, and like I just I think I tried to get it once, and then it was just it just went download, so it's still sitting in like my my like to download pile on on my search or whatever. So I did get to play it like a few hours before we left. The co uh, code came in from. Um, uh, Warner Brothers. So I was able to play like the first three hours of story mode, the first hour or so of invasions mode, a tiny bit of online, but no one really was playing at the time because the game wasn't released widely yet. So I have not been able to touch it more beyond that. And once it got back separate ways, RE4 was calling to me because uh, RE4 Remake is probably like yeah, that, running for my game of the year. Yeah, so. I, dude, I'll, I'll, I mean, just to, this is triple KO, so we're just gonna, not going to talk about it that much. But yeah, that, that Separate Ways DLC just like reaffirmed my feelings that like, yeah, RE4 is my, my goatee so far. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so I, so I, yeah. I never beat I never beat Resident Evil before. So you're saying oh, I should go dude, beat it? Oh, dude! If if I mean if you have any inclination for Resident Evil games, much less the OG, yeah, RE4 Remake is genuinely great. Yeah, okay. like you don't really you you can pl f play the original, appreciate this, or not play the original at all and appreciate like yeah. how fun mm. it is to play because there's so many quality of life improvements. Just just uh, selecting weapons just is is great like you know yeah. it's, it's so much faster so it, it does a lot to help um okay. but but yeah speaking of capcom why don't we start why don't we start with aki and i and i thought justin saying my main has switched was kind of like a troll clickbait youtube thumbnail sort of thing but it's not you're saying so you know like obviously people know that i played cammy for a really long time but cammy is never you know she's just like a character that's like easy to get into and like just easy to play Street Fighter Six, so I felt like I never had a character in the game. And then once I played Aki and able to understand her combos and like kind of what she can do in like just the overall neutral game, it was really, really, really fun. Like even the trial modes, I was so surprised on how many there were. There were like nine advanced trial modes, while everyone only had like four to five. Right? Yeah. So. The amount of combo routes she has in general and you're supposed to use is just so much. And I think that's what makes it really, really fun for me. So I, I actually completely agree with, with Justin on every single front. I don't know if she's going to be my main, but she's definitely a character I want to play more. Um, hmm. And I went back and I was immediately starting to climb to master, even with like very little time. I'm like, I'm enjoying this. That like, This was, there's a stark contrast between Rashid, which I was like feeling those feelings you see of some Japanese players missing anti-airs and stuff like, oh, like Rashid oh, yeah. is a character where I was like, oh, like I, there's some fun here, but man, is there too much pain? Uh, Aki's a character that I think might even, you know, I don't even know if she's better than Rashid technically, but she's a similar character. They're weird. They're they're both yeah. described as like tricky or whatever the heck in their character move list. <laughs> uh, but damn, dude, is she so much fun? Uh, the first character that was like, oh, what does this remind me of? I'm getting like feelings here from something else I've done recently, and it's Gil in Street Fighter uh, Five. And huh. the reason being is that Gil had this thing where it's like a retribution mechanic where you can like ice the enemy, and then you did a fire attack, and it would cause an explosion, huh. and you could like extend things as a result. Aki's 
the same way without like ice and fire. It's just a poison state. So if you have a poison yeah. state, you have you have different combo routes that change and specials that you have to do to extend the poison explosion. And then you get more stuff and then you like repoison set up again. So there's like a lot of dynamic like, OK, so I'm here. Got to do this. I'm here. Here's the conversion for that. It's great, dude. And yeah, as Justin it's said, she's just combo options. The character. Yeah, yeah, because in the not our last episode, the one before we were talking, this is when they, they only showed a bit of Aki gameplay, and we we were all like, "Yeah, it just seems like she poisons you right now." Yeah, and then people were able to like say later, it's like, "No, well, when they're poisoned, it opens up all this other stuff," which I I don't think at the time we knew or we knew very very little about. So it's not just they, they are poisoned; it's sapping <laughs> HP, but it leads into all this other stuff. Yeah, it, yes. it's like one of those it, it, one of those situations where in the early release footage, they show her like beating up JP a whole bunch. And you're like, mm -hmm. dang, she's going to be the anti-JP. This is going to be sick. And then anybody that's played Aki is like, oh, dude, you get effed up by JP. Like, that's a tough match. <laughs> like, holy crap. It, it is t it is tough. Like, obviously, you have the, the, the standard top five that most people will agree with. And yeah, I mean, she doesn't really beat any, any of, of the top tops. five <laughs> unfortunately Not at all. yeah unfortunately so um, but she is a blast though because like you just feel good when you're doing combos because like you know how every character like in order for them to do really long combos they gotta do like drive rush drive rush drive rush i her and rashid are like probably the only two characters that don't really need to just do like rinse and repeat drive rush to keep doing combos it's hmm. all with like OD moves or the retribution mechanic or with sheets like win stuff. Like that stuff is so cool. And I really do hope with like, you know, the next DLC Ed, maybe something similar would be like that, right? Like I just hope it just keeps going with this because it just makes it so much more interesting. Well, do you think that's more like a thing where it's like, well, let's try two tricky characters, but we need to give people that are acclimatized to drive rushing ed for example like maybe ed or or akuma do you think like they'll try to like you know like when uh dlc characters kept coming up for ki 2013 yeah they, and they got more try to mix it up like here's a complicated one here's a rushdown here's yeah. a complicated one here's a, a semi grappler type thing or do you think this is actually capcom thinking we need to have more characters that are not just a lot of drive rushing i think they're trying to diversify the roster just to show what they can do uh, mm, and yeah. it, it, they're showing some some cool stuff because obviously like Rashid is a different take. Rashid was an easy character before, not an easy character now. I don't know mm. how Fung would have been classified in Street Fighter V as easy or hard, but I'd say Aki has the weirdest neutral of any character in the game. And you have to like really figure that out. And it takes a lot of like getting your ass kicked for a while to like figure that out. But when you do, it's like, oh, okay, here's what here's what you got to do. Um, so I personally, I personally think Aki is probably like the hardest character in the game, you know, just to, you would say like, oh, she's similar to Chun in some way. Like, yeah, they sort of have stances and stuff, but Chun Li's got crazy buttons, dude. Like yeah. Aki does not have crazy buttons. She has stand HK and that's really good. And a couple of other things, but you have to figure out how to set up your offense differently with this character. So I, I do I'm pretty sure Ed and Akuma are going to be easy as shit. <laughs> yeah, I, they, they're going to be easy as shit because Aki is even harder to use technically than Rashid, in, in my opinion. How do you feel about that, Justin? I would say Rashid is probably easier for sure, just because the thing about Aki is like she's only scary when you're poisoned. Yep. Right. So obviously, when you're parrying all the poison stuff, you're you do not get poisoned as the opponent. The only thing you would get poisoned is the puddle because the puddle doesn't hit you. You just walk into it, or you're like in that like area and then you just get naturally poisoned right so yeah it's a lot of times parry is a really good answer against aki and also she doesn't have like like max has the best buttons from poking wise she also doesn't have the best pokings from close distance wise no. she's like very little little stubby like she yeah t-rex arms you know like well, little t-rex arms well, that's like to... snake style right yeah you know? yeah she, I guess. She, she has to play this really weird range that is like not really close and outside of crouching medium kick range that other characters have where she like oh she'll get blown up by crouch mk is like really bad so you have to play like right outside of mid range 
change and then it's this yeah. it's this sweet spot where it's like okay so now the the puddle ball works the bubble works you know stand hk can actually kind of maybe whiff punish some stuff every once in a while so that's that's like kind of the 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 issue with a character that has kind of weird buttons is that you have these other buttons where they're like their low medium kick stretches across like the whole screen and you just don't have anything to really contest that Hmm. But when you get the party started, though, Dude. it's a party, all right. <laughs> but but yeah, if you get corner carry and then puddle on the ground and they're back to the wall, dude, she is she is going to New Year's resolution party. She's like, I'm gonna fuck it. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, she's so sick, so sick. I, it's pretty cool that like in this era of Street Fighter Six and even in the later seasons of Street Fighter Five, but in between there, between like maybe Street Fighter Three and un up until Street Fighter Four, it's kind of like. I don't know about Capcom making new characters anymore. None of them are really hitting that much. Sure. Like Abel or El Ferrete or um, Viper you know, was like Ru Ru Viper. Rufus was a hit. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I'm, I will relent that that was a different character and, and Hakan for sure. But, you know, they didn't almost none of them had a lot of staying power until like jury, I guess. Right. But yeah. now it just seems like. A lot of the new characters, pretty much all of them in Street Fighter Six, are like, "This is they are established. This character has fans. You could see them returning, like in a in a future game." Where it's like, I don't know if Abel's gonna come back, and sure, like I don't think he would actually. You have Manon, you have Ed, you have like you know a couple characters that have elements of him. So it just seemed like for a while, it's like the the company that made archetypes, like that established so many, is still able. With like the new teams that have been working on like the later seasons of Street Fighter V and this, they're like they can still bring out bangers that are interesting yep. characters, and and especially like you know on on event hubs, it's just like Fong is a realized a perfectly realized uh, sorry Aki is a perfectly realized Fong like what they tried to do here they actually succeeded here yeah like that's what this have, character's gimmick have was you, have you have you seen uh a picture of Fong in, in World Tour. So what is this? Everyone's saying he's super cool and hot now. He looks really. He looks really cool. Like he <laughs> looks like a. He actually looks. He doesn't look like a cartoon Looney Tunes type of character from. They're Black trying, Black. is what they're doing. Like, yeah. They're actually trying. They, they gave him some face, like you know, some like rugged facial hair, and not like the little like long Chinese stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, he actually looks more more normal um and a little bit more buff too so he looks cooler i noticed that in the one image i saw i was like dude why it's, i got the vapors now looking at his buff chest like that's crazy yeah yeah, yeah. i think <laughs> it's also like a conscious effort from capcom with like a modern street fighter where pretty much half the cast was female characters and a lot of the ways mm -hmm. they approached that was well we always have these character archetypes from men Let's try it on a girl. Let's have a huge buff chick, right? Let's see how we can yeah. do like a female version of T-Hawk and a huge buff guy and do like a little, let, let's do these weird polar opposites of what we've kind of done before. Let's take, and and it went so well in Street Fighter V with like Seth. I think a lot of people really dug the new Seth in, in SF5. Like, let's do the same thing with, with the character that everybody hated. Let's do that with Fong. And just literally make Aki a female Fong. And instead, like, of just, okay, it's the exact same way they talk, like, no, make her psychotic. Like, we can make a character even more psychotic than Jury. Not social media psychotic, like, I enjoy the smell of death psychotic. And they do a really good job. I think Aki is one of, like, the coolest animated slash personality characters in Street Fighter in general. She's just so sick. She's so Let gross. Like, <laughs> Jury will say those things, but she'll beat you up a little bit. Yeah. But she'll be like, yeah, death. Yeah. Uh, but when it seems to me, from everything I've seen, Aki is like, no, I will kill you. Yeah. Like, it, yeah, she's, she's like rated R while Jury's like PG-13. PG-13. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly it. Very, very true. Very true. Um, so how... How does it feel being the first master rank with with uh, Aki in the world? And I'm gonna just do it for every character. I did it with Rashid. I was the first master Rashid oh, as well. I didn't. I did not. I missed that. Yeah, that's that's like my gimmick. Every Tuesday night, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take a nap and pull an all nighter until I get masters. So, but it's, but it's yeah, like, that, yeah, you goal. did that in what, like six, seven hours? It normally it will take like four to five hours to to get a character to master. Okay. Yeah, like if but you're it, you, it, it, it doesn't take too long. <laughs> I mean, Punk, like a lot of people that have gotten multiple characters masters, they probably can do it as well too. Mm. And yeah, it, like it just... um, I was um, 
I, it was a race. It was me and Goichi from Japan. And okay. I he was but when I got master, he was like two hundred points away from master as well. So that was like okay, two so, match he's two matches away. Wow, okay. So it was, so really close. It was that close. Um yeah. I guess it's just a testament to be like even though we've technically known about Aki for a while, we only saw like, you know, the first real, real, real glimpse at like at like um Evo and then like, you know, the the gameplay trailer, then that's it. But it's like the fervor four new characters is still really high and it's like still have uh akuma to go i i'm not sure if we talked about whether that was a good or bad move it's like leave akuma to the end of the season but in retrospect like whatever we said or might have inferred on a previous episode it's like absolutely the right call you want to yeah. keep you want to dangle that 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 carrot at the end of you're, the season you're, you're, you're not going to make ed the last character no one's going to care as much right yeah. so you have akuma. to have akuma you have to have the best for last right that's what yeah. we say Th- that that was like a small mistake at the end of street fighter 5 it's like uh luke should have been second to last and then uh, uh akira should have been actual the last character or like seth or maybe even gil or or something like that but like that was that was the one thing where it's like if that didn't happen to Luke, Luke would have always been at like a base to good level of people, you know, being like, oh, this is an interesting character. We'll see what they do with him. But like his Street Fighter Five introduction was just was just not the right introduction. Like even even now when they showed the new costumes and we're getting stank ass Street Fighter Five Luke costume now. Like, no, I thought we were done with this. But I, I guess it makes sense. I, it's his I, nostalgia I like his costume, costume. too. Yeah, I don't really like the nostalgia, but costume two is good. Yeah, costume uh, the two. One, the jacket with the hat and the backwards. That's a good costume. Like, they should just keep going uh, with stuff like that. Uh, Max, speaking of costumes, what about that cami costume alt with the red coat? It's like the best. It's, it's like, like the best. It's the best one. Like, I can't even. They get it. <laughs> how do they, how do they get it so much? And it's not even. This is the red coat from the anime. This is the red coat from the anime, but let's redesign it a little bit to look even baller, yeah. you know? Do we know when that's coming out? I don't. Like they they showed like a tease of it from Tokyo Game Show, and that isn't even all the costumes. The other tease was at Evo, and it's like, dude, where are these things? Come on, man, what the hell? Yeah, we have to wait. Let We're gonna have to wait you- like Let's- six months or something until Ed comes I'll- out. Allow me to give you money for these costumes, or allow me to play the game a bit more to grind for them, or or whatever it is. Let me pay you to turn off the Ninja Turtles song. <laughs> It's gone now. It's it is gone. gone. Yeah, it's gone now. We're back, we're, we're back to the gym. We're back to the jazz. Finally. <laughs> was that patched, or was were people just not able to figure out how to turn it off? You had to make a playlist. Yeah, and, and, and in order for you to make a playlist, you have to do the final mission at JP as his master at level eighteen to get the music player on your cell phone. Oh Jesus! Really? So it's either it's either you do that or you buy the fighter pass, which automatically gave you music. Yeah. So if you didn't buy the fight, so I did not buy the fighter pass the first time. So I had no music playlist. So I spent three hours to finish this JP level up quest to unlock to the music off. player. <laughs> it was worth if, it though. <laughs> if Capcom were smart, they would have released DLC that says "Turn off Ninja Turtles music, fourteen ninety nine. Like hey, it's just I, a button. You know, the one good thing was that you know, even though it did cost a lot of money, if you were a very big TNMT fan. You can uh, be a big burrito now from Chipotle. So that's is that cool, real? I yeah, I'm, I thought I'm, that was I'm, fake. I'm a big burrito in in my game. I could have swore that was like a mod. So no, yeah. so it's a backpack item, uh-huh. but you can grow the backpack. Oh, item. <laughs> so so my whole body is now part of the burrito because it's on my back. I see. So yeah, there's that. Cute. <laughs> I saw Professor X rolling around on when I was jumping in the lobbies. I was like, what the hell? And somebody made like a couple of weird items into a chair. And he was like this. He's like, mm. <laughs> like big, rolling big around. Big X-Men Mutant Academy vibes so, there. Much. Yeah. <laughs> with <laughs> wheelie there, dealy combos. There's actually a lot of like random uh, Battle Hub collabs that like you really have to search for it. Like it's not really easy to tell. Like, um, there was this one that I saw from Japan. You could be a giant, like, chocolate mushroom, like one of their chocolate candy brands. And I tried to find it, and I'm like, no, oh, this is Japanese only. You have to be in Japan or like, have a J- Japanese server to be a chocolate mushroom. So, yeah, it's like one of those things of those. where they don't have an official license for that, like, product to be a- outside of Japan, I guess. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, there's a Grappler Baki collab coming soon. I don't oh, know what yeah. that's going to be about. 
but they you know it was said in like capcom japan or something so maybe that's another capcom japan thing unfortunately we'll see the the ninja turtle thing and the the baki thing you just described it does kind of make me go like eh, that sucks that that's not like a real thing like a character or something because baki would be like it's such a you know not a prestige big collab that like a ton of like north american fans know certainly has its fan base but it's like it would be such a sick, obscure, like for the hardcores sort yeah. of thing. Like, but and eh, they're just not going to do it like in, in, a, in a bigger, big scale. Because if the if the big guest character in Street Fighter Six was like Grappler Baki, the people like like a hundred people would be like, "That's so sick!" And then like everyone else would be like, "Oh, okay, sure." Yeah, like, I agree. You know, maybe Kinshiro would be cool from like Fist of the North Star. Like maybe that would grab more eyeballs or something. Um, yeah, aside from that, the, going back to the costumes, it's like, this is like the second wave or third wave of costumes we've seen. We saw that other group that you said uh, at E3, where it was like a jury, um... In the Snuggie. Jury in the, the Snuggie. Snuggie, yeah. Everyone wants yeah. that. They want it back. I want that, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah that's part of uh, the tier two costumes. Yeah, people don't want that new Ken costume, though. He looks so ugly. Looks stupid. Who, who would dress a character and have facial hair and hair like that? It looks stupid. I hope they get rid it of it. stupid. stupid. I should be really upset about it on Twitter. You should be. <laughs> they took your likeness. <laughs> <laughs> they took somebody's likeness, that's for sure. Yeah, there, there's like an anime game I'm sure that you're in. You have yeah, Tusk's nipple is modeled after yours. Like, there's too much now. I'm not happy. You, you're not making <laughs> any money off it either. I'm like, not happy. <laughs> nipple model. Uh, so, yeah, any other closing thoughts on Aki so far? Or we, we want to move on to MK1. I, I just think she's fun. Yeah, yeah, okay. she's great. She's great, and um, I guess there was that one other thing um, that they announced too, right? The the they you the the legend rank. They now you know how oh, to yeah. get legend rank. It's, I think it's November, and then you have to be a top five hundred player in all of CFN, and yeah. then you have a legend rank. So yeah, there's that, I guess. So MK one. Probably a uh, lot to talk about. Unfortunately, like the only thing I ask is like, we don't talk about story mode, spoilery things. Sure. The, the last thing I did was I escaped from the uh, prison at, with Baraka and, and uh, reptile. Right. Uh, I will say for myself, get, just get out of the way. Like I was really enjoying the story mode yeah, it's like, fun. up until that point. Um, just on a base level, just the glow up that Baraka and reptile have received like from other story modes where they're just trash. They're just they're droppers. Just, they're, 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 like it's, it's not even funny anymore. Um, and the glow up that Shang Tsung has where I'm like, is this so my good. favorite version of Shang Tsung now? There's it's something, so ab <laughs> there's something about him where it's like, it's a little bit of the Mortal Kombat movie. Shang Tsung has yeah. a little bit of the mannerisms, but not totally. And it's not just like scheming wizard. It's just such, like this. This would be the biggest heel in wrestling. Yeah. This guy. I, I, it's like they I, added I can't an, an get Omega, over it. Like a huge pound of cheese that is the smugness of him. And he is the most smug character I've ever run into in any game ever. He's I got love Wolverine him. claws. Like, I didn't even need that, but give it to him, I guess. Um, and I really like, I'm just talking about story wise right now. It's like, at first, I was not sure about just human Raiden. Uh, okay. What is that even? And then it's like, well, he has the powers via this thing. He's kind of like a mix of, of Kung Lao and Liu Kang, where he's like humble, but he's actually a little bit cocky. And Kung Lao plays second fiddle again, where it's like, oh, well, he's the cool, he's the cool main Shaolin monk. Oh, well. He's I the prize kind of, mate, huh? <laughs> yeah. And just, uh, I haven't got much into it, but the Lin Kuei stuff was like, oh, I want to see where this is going. Um, and, that's kind of all I really like. I all the other Adenian uh, princess and and queen stuff and Shao Kahn and sorry uh, General Shao has all been really interesting. But that's kind of where I left it. I was just I feel so bad for Lee May in the short time that I play. Why does everyone hate Lee May in this universe? You uh, it's terrible. I, we can't we can't tell you. You got to keep playing the game. All right, fair enough. So like that, that's um, a spoiler. You gotta wait. <laughs> I guess. So, what are you? What are you starting with, uh, Justin? What are your overall thoughts of everything you played so far? Um, you know, story mode was great. I had a blast playing story mode. Um, and the one thing that I really 
found out why I love Mortal Kombat 1, besides the combos and the gameplay that we'll talk about, it really reminds me of an addictive gacha game. Hmm. Um, and the reason why I say that is because I didn't play MK11 uh, like that. We, we, we probably talked a few times. I only played for like an hour and then like at the party. Um, and it wasn't just my cup of tea because it, it didn't give me that MKX vibes. I loved MKX so much with combos. But for MK1, getting all these different type of currencies and unlocking stuff from the shrine and getting costumes and palettes and then, and then getting the silver coins to get like the seasonal store stuff of like the, all the characters. Um, that was so addicting. It's very addicting. Like I just love stuff like that, especially for fighting games. So for me, that was like, I'm all about it. And because it's like seasonal, that means every season they're going to have new stuff, new shrine stuff. You're going to keep getting me to play the game because of that. Um, because I could keep collecting, I could keep customizing my character, um, and then I think the coolest part is like, okay, let's say you have a thousand skins eventually at the end. There's an option where you could play online rank, and you could randomize all the skins. So each That's game, cool. you have a different skin and different weapon and everything like that. And I'm like, I had That's no idea about awesome. that. Yeah, that's crazy good. Because I was wondering, I was like, how are these people changing costumes, right? Like, yeah. when I'm playing them. And then I, you know, chat told me, like, this is how you do it. And I'm like, I'm in love, right? So I could be Barack and gold. I could be Barack and white, green, red, whoever, you know? So it was a blast. That does come mm. with a caveat where they essentially removed multiple character loadouts. So if you mm. wanted, like, I have, I like this Baraka skin. And I also like this one. I want to choose which one. You can't do that. You have to like go in the specific and specific one, right? Yes, you have to go in and set a layout for your character. You put the stuff on them, and now you're playing with that version on the character select screen. It isn't like MK11, and you go to the character select screen and you see like the different options, right? You're like, oh, this skin, this skin, this skin. I'll pick this one. Uh, you do not have that, so that's gone for some reason. I mean, I've seen a couple of people talk about like quality of life improvements, not quality of life improvements, but stuff that was options that were in MK11, little things like that, like you just mentioned. They're like, why isn't this here? Why can't I pin special moves on the screen on in training mode? Uh, that was something that you could do in MK11. And I was like, oh, that's not in here. I didn't even you know, get a chance to do training mode. I got enough currency to do one pull in the shrine. And I was like, this is going to be a fucking problem. Uh, <laughs> as soon as I did it, because I played enough Overwatch. That's the last game that had a system like that, like a loot boxy style system where I'm like, I put in like 10 bucks ever. And I was like, I got, that's it. That's it. I got the skin I wanted for Farah, and that's it. So it's like for this though, just seeing like a scorpion skin here and there and just what they'll come out with in the future. And if I continue playing, like, yeah, it's, it's going to be a problem. Oh, you're talking about the seasonal, uh, the yeah. dragon currency store. Yeah. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I already spent 40 bucks, um, for some currency. Cause, uh, the Shang Tsung voice, you could change the voice, right? Of like the announcer Wait. and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, so I. Oh, I, Shang Tsung's a voice. Yeah. yeah. So I bought that's Shang cool. Tsung. That's different. He's in the current store right now, right? So I bought Shang Tsung voice. They had the fire scorpion. Even though I don't play scorpion, it just looks so cool. It looks so cool. <laughs> I, I bought, I bought that too, and then I got some dragon uh, crystals left for like whenever the, the store reloads or refreshes or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be. A problem for me as well too because like eventually once you finish everything you can't earn any more dragon crystals unless there's like like a weekly or a daily or a seasonal mm -hmm. tower or anything like that but even then it's still not enough to probably buy everything for free you probably would have to spend real money to get everything if you're like a big mk fan um before we started recording max you were just saying how like the grind is still here like compared to MK11, it's just slightly different. Yeah, it's so just as much. The so the 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 nice thing compared to MK11 was that a, a lot of like unlocks for characters, brutality skins, costumes were kind of sporadically spread between all these different living towers. So you had mm -hmm. to like wait to get to that tower to show up or do something to to get to it. There was like potentially a lot of grinding involved. So the nice part about it is that they made each character have their own progression tree. It looks like a battle pass for the character, but it's not. It's just like a level up system that shows you, okay, so you level up to like level 15 or something like that. You should have every brutality and, and here's some more skins by level 25. You get this cool skin. There's some bonus stuff by the time you get to 35. Uh, that's awesome. 
Uh, it's way better because you now you're just playing your character, or play them online or offline, you just get stuff. Uh, but it takes a while. There's, I hate it. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta definitely play the shit out. Now that's like, oh, now we can control what we get for our characters. Dope. But now it's gonna take like even longer to to get those things unlocked in some situations. Like if you were to actually unlock everything for every character, it would be you would have to be playing the crap out of you have to be grinding some ladder match in like invasions mode for eternity to unlock all the characters if you didn't and and granted online doesn't give you that much progression it's mm -hmm. it's some early on it's like some but then it starts to scale really hard uh so you have to like invasion mode is one of the best ways to do it so yeah. i got I, I got the tech for you all right i got the tech for you it's got because the tech. I, I, I was following this one dude and he has done it got mastery for every character every cameo pretty much he did not go outside for at least like two weeks right Fair and enough. Um, you, it's in a, it's a level in invasion mode, and you pretty much have to fight three people. And if you get a flawless and brutality, you get the most exp, most money, most points. They're in that level. It's, the level is called squad up. If people are interested, because I, I everyone's going to want to grind and get to level thirty five. Because if you just did it normally, it takes forever. Like yeah. I just got level 35 maraca like a few days ago and i probably put already already like over 80 hours in the game so for me to master one character's like like level system for 80 hours that's just too long because i finished story mode i finished invasions i got everything in the shrine like so the only thing left is character masteries and that's just taking way way too long and then i mean Everyone on social media is also complaining that it's just taking way too long. And I don't think the, the devs intended to be like, hey, yeah, grind this one level in Tarkat for eight hours straight to get level 35 and then move on to the next character. That's just so boring, right? It kind of makes the game way, way too boring. It's wor way worse than a JRPG like <clears throat> level grind, for sure. And the tough part about it is... In comparison to MK11, they had these like living towers in MK11, right? So yeah. these things were like on rotation and every few hours some would change. You'd come back the next day and there's some new thing. In MK11, you could see the rewards. It was like, oh, I want to play this tower because I'm playing that character. I'm going to get thing, right? Okay, play through it. You get it. Um, invasion mode, you have to play through this, this mode that you do not know what the rewards are going to be when you're going through it. So you just go through and then things just happen to you and you just hope you get something that's maybe for your character and then it usually isn't. So ultimately, yeah, you have to like dedicate a bunch of time to just essentially grinding invasion mode, even though it's done with a character on like a one specific spot of the map and just using like XP tokens and all this shit to try to make it go faster. It's still going to take hours, right? Hours of just m mashing the same matches over and over again. Because even if you comparably put it online, as Justin said, yeah, you can put like 40 hours into playing online and I don't I don't know if you're going to finish it. I haven't stuck with any one individual character, but I think like the highest level I have on a character is like either 13 or something like that. It is not much and it's only that high because of invasion mode because I I've played that mm -hmm. character in invasion mode. So, I mean, cuz everyone plays things slightly different. Say, I like this my one character, I'll stick with them the entire game. I like several characters or I'm a completionist, I need everything for everybody. Yeah. Like I like all these characters equally and don't, it's hard to design like a whole system to appease all those players, but it just seems like maybe they didn't quite nail it here that you're not really pleasing anybody with how the unlocks work. I think, I think like, again, MK11 had a lot of unlock problems in that first month as well. I think it'll yeah, likely get fixed sure. and they'll, they'll, they'll work on some stuff. And even when you complete all the content in the game, right? All that's left to do is just play online matches at this point. The content in the game is finishing invasion mode, which can be done relatively fast, playing online mode, I'm sorry, playing story mode, which can be done relatively fast in like one night. Um, you're done until the next season. And the next season yeah. comes in like, you know, two or three months or something like that. Probably every quarter. Yeah. So there was a lot of people within even the first like couple of days of the game being out, like a lot of people that don't care about playing online being like, so what the, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Just fuck off? Like, and yeah, the game literally tells you, come back next season. And you you did it. That's it. And like, even the shrine, where you go into the shrine and use your money, that runs out as well. So yep. people did all of the shrine as well. And, it's, and it says, come back next season. 
Justin said that earlier, and I was like, he must have misspoke. Like, no. how does, <laughs> no. how, how does the up. shrine it, it, run it, out? It, it, it's a it's um if if the, if I remember it's a hunt if you have a hundred and fifty thousand that's everything yeah like that most it, of it's it concept ha- art it has a finite amount of rewards yeah. is what you're yes. saying okay yes. I didn't get that at all when I when I plop plop some some uh, money into it so back in the day in like Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance there was coins and you got coins from doing anything in the game just winning random versus matches from playing the w- whatever and you use the coins on coffins and the coffins all had, you know, uh, specific uh, uh, dollar amounts on them. And then they introduced like colored coins. There's platinum, gold, silver, blah, blah, blah. Didn't really matter. It was just like a thing. And it's like that this started like you could easily say, and it's probably true. Warner Brothers is pushing. We need more of this stuff. For people to do, but it really started in Deadly Alliance, sure. where they're like, "We, you, you want to get unlocks? Here's all the unlocks, but, but you got to earn it." But even then, I'm, I'm sure it's not it's infinitesimal uh, amount because I remember doing it on Deadly Alliance and Deception, and it, you know, you could still get everything that you wanted, yeah. but the coffins were mysterious. Yeah. The only way you would know that there was something good in there is if it's a high dollar amount. And even then, it was kind of like iffy. You'll get you'll get like a cooking with scorpion, which to be fair is worth it. But um, th- <laughs> this just still seems like the, they're going to the, have to do a big patch to it. Right. The, the one thing I do think is kind of okay is the seasonal stuff. And right now, all the characters have like McDonald's costumes for their seasonal content. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, all characters have red and yellow. Red and yellow costumes for like fall or autumn. Okay, okay. I thought you meant for reals. No, no, (laughs) it's practically for reals because every character looks like they work at McDonald's. Yeah. Okay. Might as well be. So they might as well be. And and there's there's a lot for some and only some for others, but there's masks and things that you can buy for all the characters, right? Uh, the currency you get that is called a seasonal currency. And that seasonal currency has unlocked an invasion mode, and it's also given to you by playing online matches. And I will say it's pretty generous. The okay. I have a lot of seasonal currency that I just don't have anything to spend it on anymore. So, and but granted, there's not a lot to spend it on because all the characters have fucking McDonald's costumes. So I don't really care too much. Sorry, because when you first said this, I just envisioning Street Fighter Six cross Chipotle, yeah. and this was Mortal Kombat's answer to it. Like it's Sorry. natural, metaphorical. McDonald's costumes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, wow. like, literally, literally everyone's red online when you play. When that's you fight crazy. online, they got a red costume um, and everything. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what he means. So, I, to, not, to not talk too much bad about the game, uh, this is the best NRS game since Mortal Kombat X. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be I real. think so. Uh, this is so. the most, uh, there's, there's a lot of issues and me and Justin will talk about bugs and stuff, which they are tackling there. Th- this is probably the least polished NRS game gameplay wise since even pre injustice one, I think even injustice one was more polished with stuff, it, although janky in some ways, there's a lot of crazy bugs that people are finding. I don't care. Games fun as shit, <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't care. Like it's it's not as fun as MKX to me personally, but I'm even having more fun with this than like MK9. So that's mm. that's a that's a huge net bonus, and that's something that like you know what? Yeah, there's a lot of problems in MK1 at the start between like content and distribution, and online modes are are very barren, and we'll talk about that in a bit because the online of this game is rough. Uh, I don't care because MK11, I'm sorry, MK1 is super fun and the cameo system is really enjoyable. My gripe still stands. I want more cameos. This game would be even more fun with more cameos. And I'm still like looking for a main character, but I'm having a ton of fun looking for that character. So they've done a great job. They've made Mortal Kombat and even an NRS game significantly more fun than I had with Injustice 2 and way more fun than I've had with Mortal Kombat 11. Fortunately, the core gameplay loop if it's solid, all the other stuff that we were just complaining about, it's all fixable. It, it is sure. It is stuff that can be patched. It's stuff that can be adjusted. Uh, the core gameplay, there's like you know, it's you can you can change some things around. You can improve things. But like if this was another MK11, it would uh, for us because uh, we all were kind of cool on it in, in terms of gameplay. I think I was a little more like, you know, like, I don't mind this too much, but, but for both of you guys, you're, like, not into it that much. But at the same time, it's like this. I'm also, like, yeah, I'm having way more fun uh, of the bit I played 
uh, gameplay wise with this because it's just like I always feel like I'm scratching the surface yes. of every new character I try. I'm like, oh shit, I didn't know they could do this, this or that. And like in MK11, aside from some like hard to do combos, like that's it, you know? Yeah. yeah. It was all about crushing blows. It was all about, you know, just uh, the footsies and stuff. Whereas this is just. You know, like it's almost a tag fighter. It's almost a tag fighter. The the core systems kind of went back to classic MK, like MK9, MKX. Mm -hmm. And I have to remind people a lot that like MK11 adopted a lot of Injustice 2-isms uh, into its, its inherent mechanics. There's a lot of Injustice 2 DNA in MK11, which made it not very MK-ish, like compared to what they yeah. have done in the past. They went back. So they 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 back they backstepped a bit and now it's now it's clearly more like nine, clearly more like X minus the running. So the meter burn system works the same, the armor wake up system system works the same. And it's better. It's just more fun. It's just like wow. Yeah, landing a hit in this game feels significantly more enjoyable than it did in Mortal Kombat eleven. I'm just saying people just get deleted real fast because <laughs> of uh, of the combos and adding cameos in the combos. Like right now, obviously, you know, we love the fact that Baraka's not a job anymore, but everyone but is a like, problem. But Baraka's too good. He's too top tier. He's he does too much damage. I mean, he does. He does like half life for every combo he does with Cyrax assist. Um, so it's definitely like up there. But a lot of characters can do the same thing, right? There's like full teams where it's like they're complete zoning, like uh, Liu Kang, Kung Lao. Oh man, they're so sick together, right? They're so sick together. Uh, Reiko, Sub Zero, like literally like so many cameos they really help the character so much yeah and it's just insane like i didn't think like you know like mar when you think about marvel right and you're like okay this is my assist is a combo extender so many assists acts like dr doom where they're just like dr doom just makes these characters completely useful now yes. right and with and without dr doom these characters suck but in Mortal Kombat, so many cameos can make all these other characters that are lacking something. Now they're not lacking that. And I think that's so beautiful about it's, it. It's like the inherent nature of why I think myself and Justin love tag games, love, love assist-based tag games, is because that solving those, those problems with an assist and filling in the gaps of character weaknesses, if not taking something that's already really powerful and putting it over the top, like Baraka's yeah. already really good by himself, add Cyrax to the mix, and now you just can't punish him. Uh, yeah. It's crazy, dude. So, yeah, I, I think that we're already getting to a point where it's obviously like the, the top tier assists are known. And the really, the really goddamn good assists in the games are the ones that recover really fast, um, come back quickly, and the ones that are ambush assists that you can just call whenever during any part of your offense, and they just do a thing. So, you know, inherently, like, Sector and Serena has a great neutral assist and combo yeah, extension. With the, she's just so easy to use. But, like, Cyrax and even Goro, to an extent, they have these, these assists that just come out during any part of your offense. So you can just make anything safe. You know, most uh, you just throw out a big move with a ton of chip damage. Bam, here comes the assist. I'm going to make it safe. So like, there's it's crazy. Finding good team synergy is fun in and of itself. Yeah. Yes. Right. Like just experimenting with that. And it's like Mortal Kombat's never really had that because even the tag mode in um, MK9 wasn't really that. It was just, you know two players controlling yeah. two characters. I mean, to a yeah, degree, they just they just wouldn't think about the MK9 tag mode a ton. It was insanely busted. Yeah, yeah, but it was and, it's still people yeah. want it. People still want it to this day. I want it to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who doesn't, right? But the I think the other thing is like really cool is like the assists are so different. It's not just like a hit assist or like assist to use for like chip damage. You have teleport assists that are so useful for characters that like can't convert off of things like General Shao. He has this really big overhead move that he can't really do anything afterwards. But if you use that overhead with a teleport assist, you get a full combo from it, right? Yeah. That's an example. Uh, loop, you could do a regular throw into a teleport assist, you get a full combo. Yeah. So you can literally combo off of throws now, which are already so strong in Mortal Kombat games. Um, you also have unblockables too. 
and it looks really funny it, how you can do like a big cinematic Mortal Kombat throw because throws became super cinematic in MK after MK11 especially. So you get this yeah. big throw, but with an ambush attack, you can call the ambush during it. So you look in the background of the cinematic camera, the guy's just, oh, I'm doing <laughs> shit in the background. And literally, like, yeah, your character will come up and grab them and teleport them to the opposite side, like the Kung Lao one, and you could convert throws. So not yes. every character gets that by any, because oh, it sick. completely depends on your character's throw animation if you leave them in a stun state of some kind that allows you to recover fast enough. So a few of the characters I have just don't have it. But Baraka, obviously, like, of course, Cyrax and Baraka is insanely good. They get like 25, 27% damage off of his throw now. So it's like, oh my God, it's just another thing on top of how insane he already is. Yeah, mm. and, there, and there's even like really hard assists that um, I've been seeing a lot of people finding like touch of death stuff with, like with a uh, Shujinko. Shujinko really? has has this move where he just learns your character's like best move. So, for example, if you're fighting against Garrus, right, <coughs> and you use Shujinko, you can use the the time stop against Garrus and literally loop him with the same time stop with Shujinko over and over again. So it's, wow. it gets kind of crazy. Like, it gets really crazy. Yeah, Shujinko's like the meme assist in the game right now. Yeah, because yeah. when I, like, saw a breakdown, I think it was from uh, uh, Ketchup that was just like, talking about Shujinko, I was like, yeah, what the hell is the point of a cameo that just takes other moves? And, and you have to recharge it manually. Exactly. So I was just like, uh, and then now, yeah, the, with that explanation you just said, I'm like, oh, okay. So it's and like plus, with Sindel, it makes it easy because she has like the queen's command and everything. And she yeah. also has the, the scream attack. I about that. Right. So, so technically the scream attack plus Shujinko's like steel uh, special move. Of, um, you can literally use two capture state moves because they're different. So you could do a sub-zero freeze with a, with a Sindel scream. And like that's like that's just two moves that normally should not work because if you do two freezes or two screams, they fall down, mm -hmm. right? So with this, this is they're separate. So the game is like, yeah, I guess that's legal. We'll let it <laughs> rock. <laughs> but Shujinko can actually loop that over and over again, um, and it resets, and then Sindel can do it the scream all over again. So you find touch of death combos with that. So it's I guess pretty that's interesting legal. to see. Yeah, it's a guess is legal. <laughs> I, I love an idea of a ref or a game logic being like, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, you know, it. it is. And then like Shujinko is also like a meme assist in the sense it's like you can't really have a game that touches so much upon the 3D era of Mortal Kombat, all of its characters that it's introduced and not have him who's essentially for at least an entire game, the, the main character that you played as like in the story mode and, and whatever. So that's why he's there. Um, but just like, I g gotta talk about it a little bit. When I read slash saw that, um, Christina V, who is a very accomplished voice actress, lots of big roles in big animes, uh, played all of the, uh, hissing and fighting sound effects for Natara and does Thank an God. amazing job. Thank God. Um, and, uh, and she even voice acted, directed me in the small role that I had in River City Girls because she was the voice acting director on that game. And then just going into the Megan Fox lines and it's just, what is with NetherRealm? And like, let's hire people that are not voice actors. Let's do that. Did you, did you listen to the lines yet, Matt? I did. I did. Okay. okay. So, so you have perspective. Oh, Oh my god. I'm I like have I have perspective. I, I, I'm like, man, this game is so awesome. The voice, like Shang Sung, so good, right? Liu Kang, Raiden. You could tell that like their their personality is with their voice. And then you get to the tar. And I was like, bro, what is this? Is this like 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 Siri talking to me or like an AI talking to me or like a chat GPT Yeah, a lot of people have said it sounds like AI generated. That's what it sounded like to me. Now, listen, voice acting is not something you just jump into and can do really easily. I remember very distinctly a couple of years ago when Moana, the Disney movie came out and The Rock was hired to do a role. They were like, yeah. you're terrible at voice acting. They told them. And he's oh, like, wow. yeah, I know I'm not. I, I just, it's not something, it's not a skill I have yet. So they had to work with them for months to yeah. be good at it. So you can't just jump in. That That's was why not I like the case Ronda. here. 
That was definitely it, not. But, no, no. But, but unfortunately, it's like for a fight, like for for an animated movie thing where you're like the starring role. There's tons of time you have to like. It, for a video game thing, not as not nearly as much time for it. They have like a million roles to to do and everything else. So it's just like. And I don't know if I, it's. I, there's like a miscommunication too, like because clearly yeah. every character is such a goddamn character, right? They are mm -hmm. like we're gonna we're gonna ham every single character up to the billionth degree. Quan Chi is more Quan Chi-zy than he's ever been, like even more mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. the previous games now. Yeah, I, I got a cutscene with him and I was like, Jesus. Jesus, they're chewing really, it up. They're, yeah, yeah. they're chewing that cheese up real good. So they, then you get Natara and she just talks like she's in line at a Starbucks. And there's, there's no like hamming it up in any way at all. So it's like there's like a miscommunication with the voice direction. Like somebody didn't get the, I, I literally said that. I'm like, dude, somebody did not get the notes because uh, she's just delivering lines. She's not doing anything that feels like she's in the same world as these characters. It takes you out yeah. of the game immediately because every yeah. other character is like, I'm <laughs> reptile and my family was lizards. My brother, oh, my, my, my family, family got killed my by Tarkat. I'm raided Tarkat. and I'm super <laughs> ambitious, but I also use lightning. I mean, I mean yeah. Johnny and I constantly have movie quotes and then she is nothing. She has literally like, like she just- Hi, I'm Natara. She delivers. <laughs> We're vampires, but you can't be mean to us. No, the line. The line is, "Aren't you scared of me in the least? Aren't you scared of me in the least?" Oh my god! So they, they're definitely they, listen. It, so it's a combination of I don't do voice acting. I've never done it. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the exact skills because it's not just talking. It's it's you have to emote without a costume or yeah. makeup or whatever it is. Like it, you're just in a booth. It's hard, right? And it's a probably a combination of there not being a whole lot of time because sure. if you needed another voice actress to come in and do all the battle grunts and stuff, uh -huh. which is, which is not uncommon. Yes. Like plenty of licensed games, like the voice, the, the, like, uh, let's say, uh, James Bond games, they'll, they'll not, they'll have a, a sound alike or they'll have the actor for like the main cutscene, so whatever it is. So it's, it's a combination of time. Uh, we can't have her redo all the lines all over again. That's, the first take is good. Let's just we 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 have to release yes. September nineteenth. So that's I, I and uh, you're hitting the nail on the head here, Matt, because there's so many other things in the game that are like that, which completely like everybody kind of agrees now. Like, dude, this game needed six more months in the oven. What what the hell? And I think that's just another contributing part to it. We didn't have time to like coach her and do all this. So we had to get the lines and we got to go. So. I uh, there's a lot of other stuff in the game that feels that way where you were talking about pinning moves and the lack of just features that MK11 had by default. Uh, no, it does not feel like this game was four, three, even potentially two years in development. It does not feel that way. It feels like we got something really quick and they had to get it out. So it's echoed throughout not just the voice acting in some situations. Other parts definitely feel the same way. But it's crazy because like from what I played of the story mode. I'm like, look how fucking high quality oh, yeah. this is. Like the the direction yeah. of Don't it. But like they probably put like a lot of emphasis on it. like this is what we're known for. Yeah. And fortunately, like you guys said, and also I'll echo those sentiments that the core gameplay of it is, great. is you know super fun. But yeah. it's like all the other stuff around it is just like this is not as well thought out as it could have been, or this could be like blah blah blah. You know the skins. It's whatever. just missing uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, a yeah. bunch of little quality of life stuff. Right. That's yeah. And there's also lots of uh, brutality bugs, unfortunately. There's really? a lot of bugs. What? There's a lot yeah, of bugs. Like, yeah, I've, like, I've, if you, like if you I've hit a brutality, if you hit a brutality in the air, like the character that just got brutality, they will just slide across the screen. I, and that the stage seems more will like get a widen and widen. That seems more like a feature to me, though. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a bug to me. I mean, it looks cool because you get to see the background. You get to see the trees. <laughs> So it's so, nice. So the nice part is that they, they just had a patch, right? And that, that patch actually alleviated several huge problems. The most notorious bug that I don't know if you came across it, Matt. Um, yeah, player one advantage. Yes. Well, it's not even yeah. technically player one advantage as it is player two disadvantage. Advantage, right. Because right, right. player one is playing the game. Player two was not playing the same game. 
And this yeah. isn't this isn't a completely unique thing to fighting games. Like other fighting games, the Alpha series has had this problem going back. Like even Street Fighter games of the OG eras, you can't even technically play Turbo Mode in Alpha Two because every third time you hit a one frame link, it drops. Like there's goofy things throughout all of them. But this one was yeah. so obvious that it, you go back and you look at your gameplay and you're like, I wonder why that combo dropped. And you, now you understand why. Now you're like, oh, with perspective, you now get it. You cannot do the same combo as player one. So there's something like this in Mortal Kombat 9 where, yeah, where Mortal it comes Kombat, with, it was a, MK9 it was does a the same punch. way. If both players jump punch at the same time, player one Would always, always win. wins the jump punch trait. Yeah, but in this, it's like player two is just can't do certain combos so, certain, so, yeah. so like the gravity scaling or whatever it is on player two they just drop faster so okay. things just wouldn't work it works completely fine on player one and then player two they tried multiple combos and it's like oh player one is fine player two is but that they do it it doesn't work so yeah it's 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 a rough one and you know especially for a game that's being played competitively it's like oh that's really bad <laughs> like that's really bad because it's affecting not just like every other moment it's like it's like most things will be affected by this but that's like the big one right that's like there's there's a lot of other minor stuff and i don't know if justin has run into this but if you get characters with like midair freeze states i've had my controllers reverse my controls reverse uh, i never had you, that one I, I made a video of it where if um you do like a freeze move or something in midair and you try walking under the opponent and you try flipping the direction to go the other way you keep walking in the other direction even though i'm like they'll keep walking right i'm holding left that's so weird. that's like oh yeah. that's weird uh i ran into that in the beta and i thought it would get fixed and yeah wonder chef is like i rent he made a complaint about it i'm like yep that's the same thing i'm running into uh, you have reptile and the thing that, that goes right above their head and you try to correct yourself nope my character starts walking the wrong way i'm like uh okay it's like the controls don't reverse the other one you cannot oppress uh, you cannot press the cameo button and an attack button at the same time yeah i had that issue yeah so if you press your cameo button and the attack button the cameo comes out the attack does not the crazy part was i didn't think that was a bug i thought that was just how nrs did things because they just treat treat these games like their games different from like capcom games for example so that's what i assumed that i thought it was Mind you, that one did not get fixed. So I think that could be just something that they are, that's like a legacy thing with their input system that they're yeah. not willing to do. But you have to like, so this is the first assist game they have, right? That they've, that they've pretty much made. Uh, but back to like MK9. How weird is that? <laughs> that you have weird. an assist game that you cannot press an attack button and the assist at the same time. You now have to change your timing to accommodate the game instead of the game just allowing you to do that. So... That's weird. Yeah. The other I, one. I, I, go ahead. I was. I already do something like that. Uh, with, with that, with the assist and the button at the same time. But also like, because I play more cat. Like I play more Capcom games. Like, even landing a jump in and converting from the jump into a ground combo, I I miss that half the time because I'm trying to think of like Capcom where once I land, then I press a button. Yes. But I no, need to no. press a button while I'm in the you air coming down. Bake in the button. That's what we call it yeah. in baking in the inputs uh and it's oh it's there's a huge amount of like weird input shit in this game where people are just like dude my special moves are not coming out like a lot of more that that's just a common nrs thing that's just like okay you yeah, just need to get used to, you yeah. need to get used to nrs things but it feels like there's more complaints about it in mk1 than ever before like it was like, it was in every single game especially the injustice games now it's feeling like well a lot of people are complaining about this even more than usual and yeah sometimes my shit just don't come out yeah, because yeah, I remember booting up uh, MK11 for the first time. I'm like, well, uh, moves are, do I have moves? <laughs> like, because I, I was just not used to the timing. Maybe it had been so long since MKX. But I just remember just doing basic special moves. Like, I have to do this, like, 50% quicker than I think I need it's to. Hard. And then the move comes yeah. out. Yeah, this is a hard game to learn, to be completely mm -hmm. honest. Like, with all the games that do all this crazy ass handholding and Street Fighter and all this shit, this game is not. Like, you have to be insanely precise. If you press, like, you know, if, you're, if your combo string is 1 2 2, if you pressed 1 1 2 2, you get nothing. Nothing. Yeah. No, you have to be it accurate and press the cancel at the exact moment or it doesn't work. This is like, you could call this the virtual fighter of fighting games almost, you know, <laughs> like it's the skill ceiling Max, is just you, so high. You, you've been playing Barakas? Oh, yeah. So, so tell me which, any Baraka you know stuff, I'll know. Okay, you know which one that, that pisses me off that I cannot do like 60% of the time? Which one? 
B B B B B B special moves. Yep. Oh yeah. That, I, have, I I separate it into uh, either two or like three one, different two, inputs. Three, one, yeah. Yeah. Three, th three three fours or three fours after that, and it's still hard. I'm like, yeah. so, God damn it. So yeah. So Matt, there's this move where you have to hit uh, four or B six times in a row, and then you could cancel the six B into a special move. That's so you're crazy. matching this bad boy. And I'm thinking, like, maybe I press six or maybe I press seven. And once you have a special move, <laughs> and it won't give it to you if you press the seven. It never comes out. And I was yeah. like, oh, this move. And I see everyone else doing it. And I'm like, I'm getting so mad because, like, all the NRS <laughs> players can do it free because they, you know, they've been playing it for so They're long. They're used to understand. the way that works. But, like, mm. I'm just like, man. I can't do it, and it's just driving me insane. <laughs> so the and the other one that that did get fixed, uh, that apparently like apparently pressing a button and this at the same time is not a bug. That's staying. Uh, the one that did get fixed, which was clearly an issue, some other players were running into, and I found it when I was playing Sector and Scorpion, where there's a two one combo, right? So it's two one, and then you have to call the assist and cancel it into ground fire. The assist comes in and combos after ground fire. You get this big extension. It's like dope. So I started doing it, and then I noticed I was only getting the 2-1 assist, and I wasn't getting the ground fire. I'm like, that's weird. Ooh, what the hell's yeah. going on? So apparently, if you call an assist with any timing that's close to a button, you will not get a special cancel. So even though your special move's coming out, I'm like, look at the input, dude. It's right there. 2-1 assist special. If you called the assist, no special. So they, they just fixed that. And it was like, that seems crazy to me because this is an assist game. This is like the whole, that's the whole point is for you to, so for you to do combo strings, call assists, do a special, you know, call your assist during your attack string. You, you actually couldn't do it with specific timing. And I had to like, okay, so now I got to do beep, boop, beep. I have to do this like finger gymnastics if I actually wanted to get it. So that indeed was a bug and lasted about th like three weeks now, but recently just got patched. So it's like, okay, so thank God we can actually call assists and cancel into specials. Uh, and that can actually work now. So back in the day, like I wanna say tw uh, 2011, uh, my wife was working at game testing and she got handed a uh, third strike online edition and she's doing pre-certification, so save loading, yeah. uh, memory corruption, that type of stuff. But then the other group that had to like test the game for functionality, I remember hearing about the story about like how a game tester, like lead guy that like makes the schedule, puts whoever that he wants on that team, goes, "Oh, it's a fighting game. Just have two people fight the rounds, and they they'll yeah. If there's no crashes, it's fine." And then uh, someone's like, "No." No, that's not that's not gonna not work. A little bit different on third strike because already an established game, but it's still the 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 whole the thing still holds true where it's like, no, there's a lot of things that could possibly go wrong. And he's like, What? And then they they're like they explain to him, they open up like a bunch of dip switches in the game or whatever, and he's just like, Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. They're like, Yeah, this amount of things can go wrong. And since you guys have played more than me, like I'll take your word for it that like there's all these these bugs and issues. I just haven't played enough to see them. But at the end of the day, like yeah, this does seem unpolished. Thankfully, not to a detriment to the gameplay where it's like ruining things for you guys. Yeah, it's right? not the Switch version. You know, it isn't. Yeah, it isn't that. So, no, 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 it's it's well, like if you really if you if you're playing the game for the gameplay, you're gonna run into this shit, and you're gonna yeah. you're gonna run into some funky problems. Uh, yeah. that are just different than previous NRS games. I want to talk about that for one second because all I've seen is look how bad these faces are in Mortal Kombat 1 on the Switch. I have no idea about the gameplay. I have seen like a video, but it's like, is the game actually like broken and doesn't work? Or is it just like, look how ugly it is? No, it's it's how ugly it is. Like, it does it not run okay, at 60 all the time. So that it, oh, it, yeah? is, it is not nearly as good or polished as the MK11 port was mm -hmm. so mk11 mm -hmm. just like ran okay right it was it was still a functional game this was like you're charging full price for this like this yeah. is a this is a problem so, so uh, that to me that just echoes once again another result of no time like we had to release this thing there was no time mm -hmm. so i i'd be very interested because i know that 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 recent patch to fix player one advantage uh sorry player two advantage. no advantage yeah uh, <laughs> Um, that I don't think that patch came out on the Switch yet because I'm sure that's having its own special patch. I can't wait to see like comparison videos of like pre-patch 
not pre-patch. I'm sure there'll be people that's like, I'm never going to patch my Switch version. Of Nobody's Mortal playing Kombat the Switch 1. version, did I tell you what? No, no that yeah, game yeah, is... That, it's so Casual it, people, I bet they still are. I bet that still has people yeah. buying it. I, just, <laughs> I, I, think, I think they definitely got you, right? That's one of those they situations where we got, got some of you. You know, we got you. Uh, they, and even even Ed has come back and they're like, oh, we're going to do something about the Switch version. Like, don't worry. But this isn't, I don't think, a situation like MK11 where a, a, like at least like 15 to 15 percent of their sales from MK11 was actually on Switch. They dropped like a few million copies of that game because it worked like it. It was pretty much the same, mostly feature rich version of the game. And it didn't it just looked like really low res. It's it's because it was a PS4 and Xbox One game sure. as well. Sure. Like and and this this isn't, um, but like for here's the thing with with them charging the same price. It's like it's the same amount of content. Yes. Like no no game publisher sadly is going to be like yeah we know it looks ugly but that so so what. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like content wise, if they say, "Yeah, we don't have invasion mode," <laughs> there's just, yeah, or there's no skins, or or whatever it is. All that like, stuff is yes, there. Yes, absolutely. You have to uh, make a judgment call and say we should charge less for this. But like, I've never heard of a game publisher admitting because if you charge low, you're admitting this looks like dog shit. We get it, but like, no self respecting one is going to do that. Unfortunately, it'd be cool if they did, but. You know, like it's it's like when we we games came out and they were like stripped down versions of 360 and PS3 games like they had modes missing or characters or voices, whatever it is. It's like, yeah, maybe those will you'll get like a forty dollar price tag, but more often than not, no, even even then. But I I would be very interested in seeing what that patch looks like for this for the Switch version. Because we talked about this on an episode, like maybe the, the, the one before last, where like, why can't a port to any lower spec thing, we'll just say the Switch for now, why can't it just look good for that system? Like yeah. it has a slightly tweaked art style or models or whatever. I think Max said it best where he's like, no, nah, there's no time. There's no time. Which is true. Which is true. Like, it's just the truth of the matter, unfortunately. So so a lot of stuff um, will get fixed. Like, you know, this is this is very early MK1. The the good news about it... The first two weeks. Is that, yeah, even first two, three weeks of Mortal Kombat 1 have been really fun. And it leaves yeah. me very excited for, like, how DLC characters, especially Takeda, you know, for me personally, are going to play. And even, even with Ermac's creepy, like, stupid mummy face... Uh, I know there's gonna probably gonna be a lot of costumes for him because all the other be characters. There's gonna be a sick ass skin for him. There's gonna be a sick ass skin most likely, and it, m there's a good chance his gameplay is gonna be hella dope, because already the game is setting up for some pretty interesting stuff. And to be to be frank, I'm almost even more excited for new cameos, because cameos are really where the game changes a lot. Yeah, and we like we you know there's been a list of names leaked for cameos. There's one or two where I'm like, oof, I'd love. Like even if it's just a cameo, I'd love to just see what that character looks like in this in this universe. You know what was really cool, actually, when you when you said that you want new cameos, when you play story mode, you get to use cameos that you aren't supposed to use in actual versus mode. Yeah, fire elemental really cool. and stuff like that. Yeah, oh, fire yeah, elemental, okay. ice elemental, or even like if you're like uh, you have a raiden cameo stuff like that. So like stuff like that was really cool. So yeah, I mean, I I hope. Maybe we get some of those cameos as well too, or, or even upgrades, which is nice. So, I'm not sure if it was like a mistranslation, but I think there was like a French press release for the game a few weeks before its its launch that said guest cameos. That people like look, guest is a pretty simple word, so it's yeah. hard to mistranslate that. But um, guest cameos like from other franchises is what that's that's possibly hinting at. Don't know for sure, but it's just like. It'd be cool. It's just like, here's Kratos. <laughs> like here's as a, as a cameo. Yeah, and it's just his Mortal Kombat Nine model or whatever. But I'm like, that's that's an easy thing. It's almost like the Ninja Turtle collab in Street Fighter Six, where this is not a full character, but for a relevant franchise that wants to do something, we could put a cameo. It's a little bit more expensive, but we we can do that. Why not? Like here's uh, Ghostface from Scream. So here's the thing. I love Ed. Max loves Ed. We all love Ed here. I don't ever believe nothing Ed has said ever, ever, ever. So when he says, when he posts a picture of like 
horror icons and he has a few that are unscratched out like Ghostface, like Chucky. It's like, that's a load of fucking bullshit. I can't, I can't believe you. you really I just can't. Do you really don't Halloween think that season. Ghostface is going to be in this game? It, it very likely probably would in a season two pack, but I reserve the right to call bullshit now. Okay. <laughs> I will, I will, I will take that back if it, if it is, uh, if it is true. So him and, him I, and Smoke are going to have some dialogue together because they both got the knives. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the gameplay styles we've, might be very similar now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We could be. We all thought uh, Ash Ashley Williams was going to be an MK11. There were literal voice files, and then it just didn't happen. So you yeah, never, that was like that was definitely something went down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I assume it's because he, uh, uh, Ash got his own like literal video game, and they're like, yeah, let's not do this. Let's focus on our own game or whatever. At that time, um, but like still, like <laughs> Fed posts something. I'm like, I unless it's like even their announcement on like, hey, there's nothing happening at New York Comic Con, and it's spelt out like those words are like N Y C C. So I most likely think, or not, that at least one of the DLC superhero characters might have a trailer shown off at New York Comic Con. I mean, they talked about Omni Man, but it's like Omni Man will not be there. So I don't know. Well, I guess so. We'll... so Omni Man confirmed to be there. I guess we'll we'll see. All I'll say Invincible, is that Invincible season two literally starts in like a few weeks. So I'm an I'm an Ed Boon Twitter historian. So and I've been I've been covering Ed Boon's tweets you, before. You've been studying the texts. I, I've been covering this shit for a really long time. And all I can say is that ninety percent of the time Ed is not lying. It's just that a, a, such a large passage of time will go in between an event taking place to when uh, he talks about it that people just forget that he talked about this. Okay. So that okay. that has been the case of very large multitude of the times where it's just like, yeah, he pretty much told us Sub-Zero was an Injustice 2. Yes, he told us Rain was going to be in Mortal Kombat 11, but it was 2016. So there was no perspective. It was so he plays the long game. He plays the long game with this shit, bro. <laughs> and and you know, ultimately, yeah, some some stuff that he talks about does fall through. And yeah. things that they but, have been working on in the past like do not end up happening even though they were talking about it. But he knew it to be true when he said it. Is exactly. What you're saying. And that okay. that's yeah. exactly it. And and yeah. ultimately that's why he's like he's not a he does not have a perfect uh, batting ratio here. There's definitely some ones that 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 slip by and he's caught on a strike, but still, I I would I would be pretty confident about him talking about some of those characters on that list potentially being in Mortal Kombat One, because okay. hor horror icons and you know classic movie characters are pretty much what uh, they love doing. I think they're ingrained like if you know obviously not this first DLC combat pack, but I think they're like establish anything from the 80s or 90s will 100%. find its way into the game in, in some shape and way I, or form like even mk9 like just freddy itself sure. uh, themselves even though they're based on the 2010 remake it's still it's still freddy so i think yeah. there's another thing to to remember that he said and he said this a while back it could have been six months to a year specifically yeah, said of course would you be down if we brought back previous dlc characters to be guests again so that's like, oh, could Freddy come back? Oh, could Predator or Alien come back? Because and at the end of the day, your publisher is still Warner Brothers. It's not within, yeah. without, within, it's not outside their reach. Yeah, right? and there, and you have to think like, there's been a ten plus year passage of time of like Freddy, mm -hmm. you know. So could that character? Uh, do I think it'll even be this game? I don't. It could be the tail end of this game. It could be 2027 that that stuff actually, you know, takes place. But if still, the predator I think, from Prey showed up. Ooh, I don't. I I think that's a, that's absolutely a possibility based on what he said, and I don't think he's lying. Mm. I think he's he's gauging the audience in a way that they already know the answer is yes. Because guess what? Their yeah. answer was resounding yes. Like we'd be super down for those old guest characters to come back in some way. Yeah, and all they have to do is look at the numbers for what certain characters did. Like, yeah. did. did did Jason sell like a shit ton? Yeah. Did Predator, did Xenomorph or whatever? And just like, you can just look at that data. Exactly. It's a lot easier than back in the day. So, yeah. Um, I did want to touch upon one thing that Max, you said earlier, we'll talk about later is that you said online modes 
pretty barren. I only really got to try it when it was wasn't the game wasn't even fully released yet. So what did you mean by that? Things aren't working. There's just so isn't much to do. There's a couple of weird quirks, and Justin's been playing online with a, a ton as well yeah. to know that it's kind of hard just to fight people in this game. Like I just want to grind matches, and the 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 matchmaking is kind of like weird. It takes a weirdly long time sometimes to match up with people in ranked. There is skill based matchmaking, obviously in ranked as there should be. But for some reason, there's skill-based matchmaking in player matches as well. So if you want to get player matches, they just won't find you somebody immediately. It has to find somebody with the same win record as you. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's weird. I was like, wait a minute. Isn't that the opposite hmm. of what player matches should be? Um, so it's just using the same exact matchmaking that, that, that ranked matchmaking does for the most part. Um, ranked also locks you into a 3 out of 5 set. This isn't that much different than Mortal Kombat 11. However, it gives you no options to leave. So if the person has Wi-Fi and a super shitty connection, there are some funky-ass connections in Mortal Kombat 1, dude. Like, some unplayable garbage. Like, just like, you oh... can't play Wi-Fi. The, the, these, the, this game is kind of rough with Wi-Fi. Oh, it's not that great here. No, this game, it could be trash. And here's the problem. If you win, you're stuck. You have... And that person will keep fighting you. You can't... Do, dude, three out of five sets in this game, or it feels like an eternity. So... The loser right. has to leave. The loser has to leave. It's very weird. Uh, well, that, that, but like every fighting game for the last, I don't know how long, it just gives both players the ability to opt out, out of a match. Yeah, especially if it runs like shit. That's why that's, why that's there. <laughs> that's why you, that's there. <laughs> you, you know what's the worst option in rank match? Is after you finish a rank match. Oh my god. A, you're mashing you, A and you, get, you hit friendly rematch because friendly so, rematch is the first option. For <laughs> some reason, the top option after you're super pissed off after fighting this person and you want to get the fuck out, you're mashing A to get out, it, it opts you into a friendly rematch with the person. So well, you guys are nice. stuck on the screen and it's like, what the friendly fuck are rematch. we doing here? And then you, they, both players back out because you don't want to be there. You were just mashing A. I don't, that's crazy to me. It is, friendly it's rematch... Crazy. That that nomenclature just has big vibes of like in Smash, like fight for fun or fight for glory. Like yeah. that's no, that's for fun. It's just so <laughs> annoying because when you look at Street Fighter Six, once you finish rank, it says quit or go back to custom room or quit rank match. Right, so you mat you automatically mash quit, right? Yeah. But in MK One, you automatically mash friendly rematch, and you're just stuck there if the other person says, "Yeah, I'm down to play a friendly rematch," and you have to play another. <laughs> that connection was great. <laughs> so that's yeah, so <laughs> all this stuff isn't exactly super weird because MK Eleven had a lot of these isms in there as well. Uh, it was one of the reasons I just didn't play a lot of MK Eleven ranked in general. Uh, the one that is actually super weird is that if you want to make a lobby with your friends. Oh, of just tough. choosing to fight your friends, it doesn't exist. There is a King of the Hill option that has a lobby, but it's specifically King of the Hill and nothing else. So you know how in MKX, even, you could, like, you know, create a room? Like, 30 people jump in that room. And you just you just challenge one individual person to either King of the Hill or regular versus or whatever the fuck, right? And it even makes, like, a little chat room, like, gone. Completely gone. So there is no, like, player match lobbies. Even for tournaments, like, everyone's been doing this weird, like, version of King of the Hill rooms that they have to make sure everyone is set to, like, spectating and do all this specific stuff, and you can only invite so many people or else it crashes. Also, if you fight too many player matches, the game just crashes. Like, every single Crank time I've home. played... Every time wow. I've played player matches, yeah. it just eventually... You rematch and it goes to black, you're done. Black screen. And then you, you have know, to reboot to the game. To touch up on the king of the hill so i ran the mortal kombat one tournament recently yeah how'd it go right um it's actually pretty it's actually pretty funny because literally two minutes before me running the tournament starting to bracket mortal kombat tweets servers are down because of the patch so yeah. we saw our tournament that was delayed for two hours uh, until they were able to get the servers back online so that's the first thing right uh second um when you invite two people in king of the hill if they are not in the King of the Hill room in one minute, the game just crashes. Like, you just can't, you have to exit King of the Hill, like, manually. You can't just, like, it won't just, like, disband the room or you're in the room. You, you're just stuck there in, like, that loading screen. So, that's one. Two, um, if you are the host, and depending on where the other two players live, 
there's lag. It adds lag, yeah. It adds I, lag. I, even so, if you're the even if you're just spectating. Yeah, I'm just so if, because I'm from Vancouver and let's say two players are on the East Coast, both of them feel the lag because they're playing on my server or my King of the Hill, so they're playing much farther. Hmm. So for so some I reason, to, it isn't peer to peer based. It's like yes. host based. Yeah, so I had to have them host. And I joined their room to spectate so they can play under their conditions. I had no idea it was that way. That's rough. Yeah. They yeah, are so, fucking so. lucky as shit. This game is fun as hell, dude. <laughs> this they, game is very fun. <laughs> it's super fun. Like, And here's the thing. I still give the game like a 9. <laughs> like, that's the great, I, I think I give it like an 8.5 or a 9 overall because a fun factor. Like, I, I enjoy yeah. playing it. I can actually yeah. look past a lot of these issues because it is the most fun I have had with a NetherRealm game since 20 fucking 15, dude. It's been a long time. So I, I'm, I'm like, you know, these are problems that they can get fixed you know i can understand how people will just want to jump ship and they're just like nah fuck this i'm super pissed like i like mk11 i can't i understand that man but here's the thing mm -hmm. i'm enjoying myself and it feels really good to enjoy myself with a mortal Kombat game again i love this game i can st stream this game all the time so even though most of the time we're talking about like all these issues all these bugs ultimately in the end they still made a game where we just still love it no matter how many bugs are there and i think from the competitive scene as well too they also agree they know that there's so many bugs but the game is just so fun right now like literally if you're playing from a gameplay perspective and not looking at the other stuff you're gonna love this game that's just ultimate, i think so what, what, uh, ultimate i think writing. I think the, the, the issue is that like other games have come out that are really feature rich and their 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 features like work to the point where like you're, you, there's no way you're not going to hear the direct comparison to like Street Fighter Six from some people, and mm, people jump course. into this and they're like, "Why does this game feel so weird to play?" And it's like, "Well, did you did you play? Did, are you used to NRS games? Because they this is kind of yeah. the way they are, dude. Like, yeah, trust yeah. me, I have to like remind people." You'll get used to it, and you'll actually have a ton of fun. I, I ran through this problem with Injustice 1, man, where I was getting used to that game, and just to figure out how it works. But ultimately, like, there's a really fun game to be played yeah. once you get used to the way NRS games feel. And I think, like, the comparative is that a lot of people are from Strive or Street Fighter 6, and they're used to, like, the snappy feel of, like, these Japanese games, and this, this is not that. It has a different, like, momentum to it. Which is good, though, uh, like ultimately, because you don't want all games to play like sure. this style or, or feel like this. So, you know, having it out there is just like because I remember when I played Injustice 1, I was like, I hate this. <laughs> and I played it for like two ish hours. I was like, yeah, I like this. And then like I was like, oh, no, I like Injustice 1. Then when I played Injustice 2, I was like, no, I hate this again. But um, ex except for graphically, I think what helps Mortal Kombat 1 as well, like is that it still looks really really good it's beautiful the stages look amazing. stages are amazing um i did watch your fatality uh video max because like i i had done a bunch of fatalities myself just to see a couple of characters i wanted uh before i left on my trip and then i just watched the rest on on yours and just just to touch on it very very quickly because it's not the most important thing in the world but it's like there are some great like goaded fatalities in this game but there's like five or six yeah i know and the rest are all kind of none of them bad none of them quan chi stretching out your head no you know nothing really bad but there's Just like uneventful there's yeah. like it's like Raiden, uh, yeah, Kung Raiden's Rao, fatality too. No good. Where it's just I shock you with electricity and come those. I'm gonna slice you up my hat, and I think you said it well. Where it's like the fatalities where someone does something really unexpected, like let's say uh, Baraka's when he has a bunch of my family oh, no. got killed by Tark. <laughs> yeah, it, like all that shit is great. It's like thinking outside the box. Like sometimes how some injustice two supers worked where it's like, look at this crazy shit that's happening. It's sure. not just a character doing a combo on you. It's like Shang Tsung putting a uh, alien uh, snake dragon in your chest. Yeah. Some crazy and, like, shit like that. And I think um, that just, again, it boils down to like, I think they just didn't have that much time. <laughs> like, like you, you see MK11 has all of these like ridiculous, like beautiful things about it. Like it gives you multiple intros, like four intros per character, intro yeah. and outro dialogue, or I'm sorry, intro dialogue for the characters that is like multifaceted has way more than the intro dialogue of this game. And all of it has like crazy animations to it and shit too. That's all gone. Yeah, to to be fair though, I did when I was editing some videos this week, I did put on some there's a few channels that are just they a few channels that just put 
here is all the intro dialogue yeah. that's like grouped by conversation. Like this is characters admitting fault. This is characters talking about characters that are not in the game. Mm -hmm. And some of those last like quite a while. Like they're short. They're always like like one statement, one rebuttal. Yes. But there's a shitload of them. Yeah. Or or I I mean I kind of spoiled myself for like not really, but well like characters are talking about characters that are clearly going to be DLC or at least being teased that they're in this universe. For sure. And there's like a shitload more than I even realized. Like stuff that we already kind of know, like, oh, Onaga is a thing. And Reiko's ending is like, gotta get Onaga, the Dragon King. And like, there was even more characters beyond that. And I was like, this is just really fun to hear. Like more so than an MK11, which is very like restricted to this is the story we're telling. And they don't really go outside that box that much. And and just and just this, just the intro dialogue. I'm like, there's so much, there's such such deep pulls to as well. Where I'm like, you don't even need to don't you don't need to talk about Hotaru. You don't need to talk about how Havoc is actually Dairu, which is crazy to me. Like you're just conflating both characters together. So like just on a, a casual basis, just from my like you know brief like two like three or four hours of playing. I'm like, I really like all the lore stuff that they're doing here in general. Like I'm interested in it. Whereas like MK 11 was here's a story mode and that's kind of it. But I feel like there's more here. I got another weird one. Mm -hmm. Where do you go to actually see those intros? Uh, to like review them again. Yeah. Where, where, uh, you go, if you, if you want to watch them, where do you go? You go, you go nowhere in the game because they're not cataloged <laughs> or chronicled. You have to go to YouTube. That's, like, what, that's, and that's, that's it. That's the other weird thing. In invasion mode, they're gone. When you play yes. online, yep. they're yep. gone. It's and only in versus. Offline versus is like the only one of the few places they actually show up. It's like that's they're, they're hidden. Like, it's very weird. I wonder if you could actually like collect them in like a like an extras menu where like any ones you've seen or like added as as at least the voice lines play. Maybe not the animations, but like it'd be like all of Johnny Cage's interactions with other characters, and you could just play yep. them in a list in like a game. Like you know, like you can play a music player or something like that. Because like that's where Mortal Kombat can excel, where it's like you know, like, like, what is Cammy really gonna say to you know uh, a Zangief really of of interest? Exactly. So in a Street Fighter Six, like, she'll have the characters that are relevant to her, or, you know, Red Nine people or or you know whoever it is. But like for Mortal Kombat, like every character has at least one interaction with every character that's like, whoa, that's really interesting. Like people are just talking about like other timelines and shit and I, I don't even know what's going on there with that yet so i'm just i'm just really interested in that stuff i really like after this podcast i'm gonna be like i have to finish the story mode like right now tonight so yeah it's, it's I'll fun at least be I, th I think i think overall you'll like the story mode okay. i think matt is gonna fucking love it <laughs> i think matt is gonna collectively lose his mind i am not setting so, up expectations though I put out the one video I did of me playing the, the first three hours of story mode. Right. And I had, I had someone say something like, that's perfect. Or they're like, you're going to love this story mode or hate this story mode. I'm like, no. that's great. No, no, there's... no, but like, I, I just don't want anyone to say like, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. No. Like when, when it's an, on an, on an extreme love or hate, like that's exciting to me. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, Matt. I was, okay, I, we did we the entire story mode with all of yeah. your video games with a group of friends. Right. And by yeah. by the time the 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 finality events were happening and stuff like that, we were hooting and hollering. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> like it was just absolute fucking pandemonium. Uh, so I think you're gonna have a great time. I can't wait so to see your I, reaction. I watched your video of that up until the point where I stopped playing. So it's like after you see how Kenshi lost his eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just I was like, let me just see that. Yeah, let yeah. me just see that. And so I saw that. Then I then I noped out <laughs> of the rest of the uh, of the rest of the parts of the uh, of the story mode playthrough. But uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited now that separate ways is done, fully done. I like I want to jump in on that because there's October. Like I kind of thought September was like really crazy with games. Like oh. There's so many games coming out, but then I actually look at October. I'm like, this is messed up. This is messed up. <laughs> I'm so glad Tekken 8 did not come out this year. God, That's dude. Yeah, we got that oh release God. date as well. Thank God. Tekken 8 is Janu late January. Oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was, it's also it was really the same week as uh, Undernight 2. Oh, shit. Well, for some people, that'll be a huge problem. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Not Max, though. <laughs> I definitely will be playing Tekken 8. I uh, to be playing a lot of Tekken 8 that weekend. Yeah. Oh, that's so, the beta for Tekken 8 this month, too, with the with the new characters. It's, oh, it's yeah. It's later this month, yeah. Yeah, beta this month. Uh, so so just to wrap things up, on MK9, you, you kind of threw out a number there. Uh, MK9, sorry. MK1, you said A9. So what do you what do we actually sort of like yeah saying about this? I think I cr I, I probably critically put it at somewhere like an an eight, you know maybe even lower depending on like if these bugs really are issues to you. To me they aren't game breaking. I have to think of my critical ratings like an eight, but my personal rating somewhere between like an eight point five to a nine, because mm -hmm. it did the thing that I am eternally grateful for. I'm really enjoying playing an NRS game again. And it's been a long time, man. Like, Injustice 2 and MK11 were just not it for me. I, I got some passing interest in those games, and some characters were kind of enjoyable. This game, the core game is interesting. And I'm still looking for a character that I really like, and I think that's just going to eventually show up. And, like, I kind of already think I know where Justin's going to say, where it's like you played, like, two hours of MK11 ever, and now you said you spent, like, 15 hours on one character in this game, so I assume it's similarly a high it's, praise for this it's it's high praise like i would say like yeah it's like a nine for me in terms of me personally um if i had to critically say it like with all the the current issues at launch and and just like my obsession of uh trying to be a completionist when it comes to fighting games stuff like this it's probably like around like a seven because one hmm. i am turned off at trying to get mastery for every character to level 35. Like, I do not want to sit in the same Tarkat invasions location squad up for six hours straight per character. It's per character, by the way. Per character. <laughs> to to so, back up what Justin says and to give MK1 a little bit of credit, I run into the exact same problem I had with MK1 that I have with Street Fighter 6. And it's that I barely touched any of the single player content in Street Fighter 6 because I just kept going online and wanting to play people. And it's the same thing in MK1 where I did a little bit of invasion and I haven't gone back to play it at all because I just want to jump online and play people. Uh, it, yeah. And that, that part of it, the game is so much fun. You did do the story mode though. Yeah. We did do the story mode. We grinded that out like even before the servers were like online. Yeah, but 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 you know that that's like a main draw of the for game. For sure. So that's slightly different. You still need to do that Street Fighter Six World Tour mode. Like we we all have to peer pressure Max into doing this. We, you know, I was like, hoping. I was really hoping. I was hoping Aki was going to be uninteresting. Like, okay, I need something else to do. <laughs> But damn it, dude, this poison chick is so sick. What the hell? We can only hope that Ed will be a bust <laughs> and he'll be forced to, to go play. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what it is also? It's just because Mortal Kombat 1, you have to do these modes to unlock stuff. To unlock Havoc and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's like, true. World, I haven't world, done world, that yet. Yeah, World Tour, you just play World Tour. like, And then you get to be your outfit. You get to learn your avatar moves and everything. But you don't earn anything yeah. mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. use, to use in rank match. So Capcom, take note. Please lock Akuma behind having to defeat don't do World that. Tour mode. Don't do that. Please don't, don't do, do that. that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you got me, but I'm pissed. <laughs>